I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on trigonometry. We'll now discuss how to prove trigonometric identities. Now, I've taken up examples where we are going to use compound angle formula. I'll soon give you the formula and then we'll prove the following identities. So we have six of them here. We'll take them one by one. But let me first give you the compound angle formula. You can always pause this video, copy the question, try it out, and then look into my suggestions. So the compound angle formula for sine and cosine is something like this. Sine A plus B can be written as sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. And cos A plus B can be written as cos A cos B minus sin A sin B. Perfect. So it's a very simple formula which you have to remember, right? So there are no two ways about it. Uh, we have proved this formula somewhere else, uh, but it is not important. It is very important to remember it and apply when you are doing trigonometric identities. Perfect. Okay. Now this formula for A minus B will be what? just change that sign correct so that will be for sine a minus b and for cos a minus b this sign becomes instead of negative positive perfect so what we get here is actually four formulas right so so this is the set of formulas which is going to be utilized to prove the six identities which we just have so let's begin with the very first one okay so i've copied these identities here so let me begin by giving you the formula. We want to find what is sine 2x. Now sine formula is sine a plus b equals to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Perfect. Now if I write that a equals to b and both are equal to x, then see what happens. Then I can write this as sine of x plus x equals to sine of x cos x plus cos of x sine x. Now x plus x is 2x so we get sine of 2x equals to sine x cos x plus cos x sine x is 2 sine x cos x. Right so so we get another very important formula. So this identity is used many times to prove other identities so we have taken up here an example directly how to use this identity in proving other identities so that's the beauty and we have actually started with very simple examples mainly to get you started and soon you'll find that we'll land up into very intricate and difficult questions so here we have cosecant 2x equals to cos x cosecant x divided by 2 cos x. Let's prove this. Now, whenever you're trying to prove identities, you could start from either side. You could start from left side or right side. So, so what I will do here is that we'll start from both the sides and see how to do it. So, if I begin with the left side, which is cosecant 2x, then, I mean, in that case, what is cosecant 2x equal to cosecant 2x is 1 over sine 2x correct and what we just learned is that sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x so i could write the left side as 1 over 2 times sine x cos x right so what i've done here is utilized directly the identity which we just proved right so i'm taking help of the very first uh, proof and that is how you're going to do in many cases. This is also a standard formula, right? So we get something like 2 sin x cos x. We want cosecant x in the numerator, okay? And we want to leave these things in the denominator. So let me go one more step. So I'll write this as uh, 1 over 2 cos x. And we already have 1 over sin x here. Perfect. So I'm just splitting it away and writing it so that you can conveniently see the result. So we get 1 over sin x is cosecant x, right? 
and in the denominator we get 2 cos x which is equal to right side. So we have shown left side is equal to right side and we have proven the identity. Correct? You could. So now we need to prove that sin x plus pi equals to minus sin x. So we know the formula which is sin a plus b is basically equals to sin a cos b plus cos a sin b. Correct? Now in this case we are talking about sin of x plus pi. So b is pi and a is x. So we'll replace a with this. So we'll again use the same formula and write this as sine of x cos of pi plus cos of x sine of pi. Now if you don't remember the values of cos pi and sine pi, what you could do is, and that's also a good idea, to just sketch the two graphs, right? So we can just sketch the sine graph and the cosine graph on the side. So we have the sine graph here and we have this uh, cosine graph here. Cosine starts with 1, ends with 1. Sine starts with 0, ends with 0. Right, so this is sine x and that is cos x. So we are looking for pi. So pi is like mid value, correct? So, so that is what pi is. So for sine, it is 0. For cos, it is minus 1. So we can actually substitute these values in our expression. So sine x times cos pi, which is minus 1, plus cos x sine pi, which is 0, right? So, so what we get here is minus sine x. Is that clear? So we know that sine of x plus pi is equal to minus sine x. Perfect. So that is how it could be very easily shown. So now let's move on to the next example. Here we have compound angle formula for cosine. So let's see. Formula given to us is something like this. Since this is a new formula for us, I am writing it again and again. That will help you to remember it. That's the whole idea. Right? So for many of my students, this is going to be the very first exercise. Now we are trying to work with cos of 3 pi by 2 plus x. So we'll replace a with 3 pi by 2 and b by x. So we get cos of 3 pi by 2 times cos of x minus sine of 3 pi by 2 times sine of x. Remember, when it is positive for cosine, we are taking away, right? Now again, if you don't remember the formula, you can actually look into these curves right so so our curves are these are the curves for sine and cosine so 3 pi by 2 is what so 3 pi by 2 is right there this value gives you 3 pi by 2 right so this is your cos and that is your sine so as far as sine is concerned the value is minus 1 and as far as cos is concerned it is 0 so we'll replace those values. So cos of 3 pi by 2 is 0. So we get 0 times cos x minus. For sine it is minus 1. So minus 1 times sine x. So what you get here is minus minus becomes positive sine x. And that is what we have. Correct? So, so that is how you could show it. So I hope it is absolutely clear. Right? Now let's move forward and take a few more. So now we have to prove 1 minus sine square x divided by cos x equals to sine 2x over 2 sine x. Now you could begin from any side you want. So let's start with the right side in this case. It is your choice. So if I start with right side which is sine 2x over 2 sine x, in that case we know what is sine 2x. So the numerator could be written as 2 times sine x cos x correct and in the denominator we have 2 sine x okay so what you notice here is that we could cancel these twos we could also cancel sine x so what we are left with is just cosine x so that is my right side okay uh, and that is very simple form so now i should also look into the left side which is 1 minus 
sine square x divided by cos x. Now 1 minus sine square x is cos square x. Perfect. This is from the Pythagorean identities. So we get this over cos x and one of the cos cancels. So we are left with cos x. So what we have shown is that the left side is equals to right side and both are equal to cos x. Is that clear? Right. So that is how we are going to prove it. And the two formulas which we have used are 1 sine square x plus cos square x equals to 1 and another that sine 2x equals to 2 times sine x cos x. Perfect. So let's move on and take up the next example. We need to show that cos of 2x equals to 1 minus 2 sine square x. So let's begin with the standard formula for cos a plus b. Cos a plus b is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. Now in this formula, if I substitute a equals to b both equal to x, then I get cos of x plus x equals to cos of x cos of x minus sine of x sine of x, correct? So that gives me cos of 2x equals to cos square x minus sine square x. Okay, so this is also a formula which is many times used, right? So I'll write this as formula number one, which we have derived. But here, from here, I'm going to derive the next one, which is one minus two sine square x. That means we want to replace cos square x basically. Okay, so what we know is sine square x plus cos square x equals to one. So from here, we could write that uh, let me write cos square x equals to 1 minus sine square x, correct? So we are going to substitute this here, okay? So if I make that substitution, I get 1 minus sine square x minus sine square x is cos 2x. Now what is that? When you open the bracket, you get 1 minus 2 sine square x, correct? So, so this is the formula which we just derived and which you want. We call this as formula 2. Well, here we have one more formula. So let me just go ahead. And this time we'll again begin with our formula number 1, which is cos 2x equals to cos square x minus sine square x. But this time I'm going to replace sine square x by 1 minus cos square x. See, I could write here sine square x equals to 1 minus cos square x. So if I do that replacement, what do I get? I get cos square x minus 1 minus cos square x. So when you open this bracket, you get this as equal to 2 cos square x minus 1, right? 2 cos square x minus 1. So we get cos 2x equals to 2 cos square x minus 1. Right. So basically with cos 2x, there are three different formulas which can be utilized. And as we move forward with trigonometric identities dealing with compound angles, these three formulas play a major role. Right. So, so remember these three formulas which are for cos 2x. And I hope that will help you a lot in moving forward by, for proving trigonometric identities. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.